To order at 6.33, I believe. Welcome, everyone. Um, reception of guests. Uh, we, we have no guests. We are all hosts, it appears. Um, and reception of guests. That's sort of a funny way to put it, too. But, but you can give us another term okay. if you would um, like. Yeah, later. <laughs> okay. Um, agenda revisions. Marilyn. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, agenda revisions. Uh, do we have any from, from the board? Uh, we may, time permitting, have a brief executive session at the end um, to, uh, to continue the check-in with Deborah and talk about goals. Um, we'll see how it goes. What I'd really like to do is, um, is achieve my life's ambition of finishing by 9 o'clock. So, um, and I have a, I think I circulated among you um, the idea of when we hit 9 o'clock, if we haven't already finished, we will actually have board action to continue. And by a majority vote, we can continue for half an hour. And, um, and then, you know, every half an hour repeating that procedure. Does this seem like an acceptable idea to all of you? Because I think it's important for us to set a proper example in the self-care department. Um, otherwise, our fellow hosts may think that all this talk of self-care is just <laughs> idle chatter. So, so far we're on time. I just want to point that out at 6.35. Yeah, but George is going to call me if I don't hurry this up. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so um, that's the only agenda comment that I would make with the possibility of an, of an executive session. Um, public comments. Uh, has anybody any to um, report? I've heard a couple. Um, one request that committees basically do what the board does and have someone kind of a rapporteur or somebody um, just a very brief information in front porch forum on what each committee is doing. Um, if, if the committee chair could designate someone for that purpose, that would be great. Does that include negotiation? Negotiations, no. Negotiations is, is a different animal. And, and I think you do your own... There's a little summary that right. comes out, but I don't think it goes in front court form. Right, so it wouldn't, and, and, that, and that's fine, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, thank you very much. Let's move on then to Spotlight on Stephen Dellinger Payne. Well, great, because I'm good enough. Um, the, um, we're not going to take a tour or anything like that. We actually did not prepare anything major for tonight, for just to be very honest with you. Um, but we did want to show you one thing that we've been trying to do more of here and actually participate. Um, and so it's a little participatory. Um, we have been doing these postcards uh, with our, uh, having our teachers put together a postcard um, that goes out when they, something good happens uh, to send home. And um, we've taken time for the whole staff to send out, just pick a kid, send a postcard home. Um, and, uh, and so we are offering to you the opportunity to send a postcard to um, somebody within our school community. So somebody who either works or volunteers within our school community. And we're actually putting Deborah on the spot for just a second, which is we're gonna give them to her so that they get to the right school. Um, and so that it can be with any of the schools, with anybody there, but just a thank you or a note of, of, of kindness, whatever you want to do, this is what we've done. And actually, we can do that here. Yeah, as we well. can do that as well. Um, and so uh, it's something that we, we've started this, this year. We did some last year as well. And, um, and so we just want to offer you guys the opportunity to do the same. 
there's going to be a lot of activities that start coming up in January um, where we'll be able to see like art show stuff and pieces like that. We thought maybe just a couple of minutes here and probably in before 10 minutes. And so if there's any questions that you guys have about I have more. Do you find one that you want this. to use? Oh, 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 I thought we were going to get the whole pack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, everybody Darn. needs to take one or two. Oh, How I'm sorry, I didn't realize right. that. Because I'll take one of yours. This, that basket sits in my office I'll and teachers come in every week mm -hmm. and take postcards to send to Thanks. students. So, and we can do either? You can do yeah. students, adults. you can do adults. Yeah, and so if you can address at least their name yeah. and, um, and what location yeah. they're at would be best. Because then we can write distribute write them out of the uh, central uh, office. So if you know what school they're at, that would be helpful. That's great. And, and if we do this by the end of the evening, yes. um, and give them to Deborah? Absolutely. Wonderful. Oh, of course. It can be adults, it can be students, it can be anyone in our school community you want to send a nice word to. Our teachers do this all the time for students, and actually our administration does as well. And you can imagine that someone that has had negative interactions with me, for example, um, because of some behavior, and they've come into my office, and, and it has not felt good to have to own up to whatever they're responsible for, um, to later, a year later, get a card in the mail that says, hey, I noticed you're doing a really great job with this, or I noticed you helped the student. Thanks for that. It's just, it's a good thing for us to do because a lot of times, just like picking up the phone and making that positive call, yeah. um, families don't always hear enough positive. They hear everything that goes wrong, but they don't always hear all the things that are going right. Yeah. And so we started last year with our staff working on that, and this is one way that we've done it. And you'll notice that most of these photos are of our students, or they've been taken by students, or they're of student artwork, for example. So that also is a way to kind of showcase what's going on here. So it works in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Great pictures. Yeah. So we thought if you wanted to take the time now to write them, great. Otherwise, if you wanted to recoup the time so that we could continue towards that 9 o'clock goal and write them at some other point and make sure that Deborah gets them so she can distribute, that's awesome too. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Stephen, this is a really cool idea. Both Stephen, Jody, thank Jody. you, Jody. Yeah, I, I think the other day at one of those meetings I was calling into, I, I, I labeled you a genius, and you said no, it was Mark, Mark Andrews. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I, I seldom am the genius of most of these great ideas. Um, so we need to make sure that we point to the people. You just give yeah. me the right to hire really good people. And, and there's a genius in that as well. <laughs> Most definitely. Thank you, Jody. <laughs> That's great. Um, good. Uh, so I think what we'll do, feel free to write these as we, as we go. Um, if there are any sort of slow spots in the meeting, I doubt, of course, that there ever are. But... Um, <laughs> no comment. Um, uh, otherwise, what we can do is move into the book reflection. And um, Aaron, thank you very much for facilitating this time. Absolutely. Does anyone need chapter seven? I do. Oh, right. <laughs> Am I part of this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So I'll do my part to buy some time tonight as well. Um, the groups for today are up on the board here. And uh, we're going to use the three level of text protocol. The problem is familiar because we've done it before. There are only so many of these. Um, so we don't need, not everybody needs one, but uh, just to just to kind of make sure that when it comes to the timing of it, um, each, each group is five minutes. So each increment is, is, is five minutes, so I'm going to have a timer going. Um, three of those minutes within the five is one person highlighting uh, a passage that they selected. The other two minutes are for the rest of your team to respond. So within that five minutes, kind of two things are happening. 
think last time we did this, we got a little stuck on the five minutes being one person talking, and then it kind of fell apart from there. So, um, just a reminder for how that how that works. So, the groups are up on the board. Does everybody have one of these ones? And uh, they can decide where they want to go with the group. Um, at the end, we'll just take a couple minutes to see if there's any debrief of the process, and that'll be that. So, okay. Give everybody a couple minutes to get into group, and I'll announce as loud as I can that we'll be in. And um, Alicia was is not here this evening, uh, nor is Mia, but I think the groups are going to be okay without them, the way they're set up now. Okay. So you use the groups on the board, not the groups? I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, so I had the groups in the groups back were prior to tonight. So did I. Regard the back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So skip the back. Use the ones on the board is what you want to use. Thank you. Yeah. Go around and anybody speak the group or just anybody at all wants to put a flavor of uh, that we've talked about. You can just a couple quick, couple quick statements that we could. Sure, five minutes. Sure. Okay, I guess I have the floor. Um, in our group, we're, we're overachievers, so we went immediately to the, what do you have to do to get an A? And, um, and uh, we talked about the legislative aspect of, of the board. The board as legislature, uh, the superintendent is essentially the executive, and all of you as part of the executive branch. Uh, we talked about the need for openness and curiosity and being consciously uninformed in a positive way as well as the need for uh, a really strong and um, trust building evaluation system. similar conversation and we talk about the, that the district should not always wait until they have all the pieces of the puzzle to embark on the path of becoming a PLO, so being persistent, uh, but also that we have an opportunity, but also a responsibility to collect the data from, from everybody to make sure that we're headed in the right path. And then uh, uh, we were talking about that how can the school board help identify superintendents who believe in collaboration? So how important that is going to be for us to identify somebody that believes in this process that this is where we're headed. Did I miss? Yeah, I'm saying much on the trust. On the, the same, yeah, on, 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 the, on the trust. And how do we create that culture of collaboration? Right. We, we mentioned the need for data too. I mean, I think that the the questions in this chapter are, are great. I think there's way too many of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to get a, you know, a canvas of the, you know, the entire you know, WCDA USD community and start trying to get a sense of what priorities are from, from that. That was a very small part of what we talked about. I'm just sort of piggybacking on, on, on what Floor said. Um, you know, I think the core of what we talked about was ha the, you know, whether you call, you know, a, or an organization, a PLO or not, it's a mechanism for surfacing priorities from the professional educators so that the board can, you know, weight those and prioritize those. Um, and, um, you know, and, and represent the community. You know, there's sort of some process and governance uh, talk in there. Um, did I miss anything? I think conversation was wide ranging. Results oriented viewpoint. Yeah. And, and really what, what are what do we want to get out of this for the larger community? This whole education thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
any other groups? Anybody in the that for us? Ours also focused on trust, that um, quote on trust and what does that really mean? And how do you know if you can be honest and vulnerable and building that trust? add that from my perspective and listening in, the tone of every conversation is really positive, so it was a nice thing. So. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Aaron. And thank you, everyone. So we are at agenda item 4.0, a consent agenda. Uh, I move that we approve the minutes. Floor moves. Jail seconds. <clears throat> Any changes to the minutes of November 20? They look good to me. Um, everybody's okay if we move to a vote? All in favor of approving the minutes of November 20th, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Good. So, um, how about the board, the board orders? Okay. Um, would I'll make, I'll make a motion, motion. Okay. to approve the first warrant at $421,789.60. The second one is $18,082.68. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Chris seconds. Thank you very much. So, any questions about the board orders? I don't know what yeah. the pink slip There were questions. I did have Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, pink slip. Vera. <laughs> the Abby's self storage. Uh huh. Do we have any idea what the storage unit is for? Yes. Yeah. It's for cleaning trans items. We just recently um, transferred the items from personal locations to an on-site while we figure out the permanent need for these items. And the orange stuff that is 50% down. Mm -hmm. um, and that, the, that just goes from just like the bus bar to orange. It does one stop in orange or um, it does multiple um, stops? You want to speak to the stops? Two stops, I think. Two stops. Yeah. So it stops at both, it's, it's right. orange it's and Washington. Barry. Yeah, it stops in Barry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is it a contracted amount? So yes. Yeah, it, yes. So it's not a fee for service at that point. Regardless True. of the We team. negotiated at the time of the bus contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I had a question on the at and I'm assuming it's a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. For 627. Yeah. For the with custodial our custodial staff have we have some mobile phones within the custodial staff. That's just the walkie-talkie idea <laughs> for offsite, right? Because well, it's, so yeah, it's so that they can get a notice in the middle of the night that the uh, boiler is not working. <laughs> like we want them to have that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would prefer that they had that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two questions. Sure. sure. Um, the, 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 Looks like a tuition payment to Orange Staff Lab. Oh yes, okay. What is, what is um, so students, uh, one student, I believe, attended the Tech Center okay. in the last six semesters. So there's a six semester averaging. Okay. And is that is that the same for the shared cost for the Barry SU? Yes, those would be Tech Center goals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? Sorry, we were just conferring on the name. Orange is great job section. Did you want to say that? Uh-huh. Oops. It's okay. <laughs> All right, then. If there are no other questions, let, uh, let's vote on, the, um, on approving the board orders. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Great. Okay, now we're into the 5.0 reports. Now, um, because we have the superintendent's report and the leadership report written, um, there, uh, there's no reason to recap that, although I would just like to express thanks in, 
in the same vein as Deborah's letter to the Washington Central family, which I thought was quite nice, um, and to all of you for, um, for having fleshed out what has been happening in your domains over the past two weeks. Um, there's obviously a lot going on. So if, if, any of, if any board members have questions on any of this, um, please feel free to pose them. Dave Melnick is pretty busy, it seems. Yes. Yeah, I guess that was my only question. Do you have some highlights to share because we're recording this meeting too? Like, just highlights of that you know, training. Of the training yeah. 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 Um, it was amazing that we had bus drivers in the room. Mm -hmm. um, they were incredibly, um, I guess, I'm struck by the learning. Um, as were some of the paras, it was the first time they've experienced some of the learning around trauma and home care. Um, and we do have 15 people of that group that have volunteered to take an undergraduate class um, that starts next week. Um, and yeah, I mean, just the feedback from it was amazing. People clearly want more, right? Um, and they see the, you know, the impact in the kids. And so that's wanting folks to learn. They want to learn more about how to support the kids that are in our schools. That's great. Thanks, Kelly. Yep. I, I was just really struck by um, the commitment to community service, both in the, the trauma-informed learning and what uh, Gillian uh, said about Doty and all of the, uh, the, the donations and yeah. the community service work. It was just great. Yeah. That's another good thing to get on camera. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I really appreciate getting all the newsletters. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sometimes yes. I think, oh, I gotta read another newsletter, but then when you get into it and you see what's happening in the schools, it's very informative to see across our system uh, all the great things that are going on and the principal's voice in the newsletters. Yeah, yeah, it makes it real. It really helps a lot, thanks. Um, anything else on superintendent and leadership team reports? I just wanted to point out that the negotiations summary statement is included on page seven of my report. Um, I do not have minutes available because that group met just before the right. holiday. Uh, so if That's anyone fine. would like me to read that aloud or if you will just, just refer to it for all of you so you know where we are with that first. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lindy, do you think it needs to be read aloud? Or Jonas, sorry. I think we got it. Yeah, by email, didn't mm -hmm. we too? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Can, can I just add, we've we've got to add something at the beginning of the meeting, um, just as an announcement to, to all of you. We we did suffer a uh, loss this week. Oh yes. Um, we had a former uh, teacher, uh, Susan Dinta, yeah. passed away um, over the Thanksgiving holiday. So um, that was something that we we forgot to mention at the very beginning of the yeah. meeting. I know that the staff U32 uh, when we gathered today for our faculty meeting. Um, for those of you who knew Sue, we felt that a moment of silence was the exact opposite of what um, would be appropriate for her. And so there was a sharing of some stories that uh, probably should not be on the camera. <laughs> but uh, we're certainly um, very kind as to who she was and, and the work that she did for the students and families here at U32 for over 30 years. Yeah, yeah. I understand so, she was fond of Hawaiian shirts. She was she very was fond very of Hawaiian fond. shirts. Apparently, next week the um, case managers are all going to wear their Hawaiian shirts for the case manager. <laughs> she was a special education teacher. Yes. Yeah. yeah, in our middle school time. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, and she worked with my older boy mm -hmm. very, yes. very well. Well, and she was a blast on eighth grade trips. She was the most. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she was. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yes, everybody has a, a first time you met Sue Dinta's story, mm -hmm. um, I think. And Sue was a wonderful educator. It was a, it was a big loss for us. Um, yeah. And our current students, because it's so fresh in our mind. Uh, she was just, she retired this last year. Yeah. 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 And we'll inform you of the arrangements so that in case anyone is yeah. interested in attending. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. 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 Deepest sympathy mm -hmm. and for her family as well. Um. Well, that's a bit of a somber note to yeah. introduce <laughs> you, Towns. Okay.
bring us back up. Yeah, he'll bring us back up. <laughs> so as you all probably know, we just uh, just had our Thanksgiving break. And we only have a few more weeks until our Christmas break. Which is, uh, this special time is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> as far as uh, things that have been happening around school, there was a seventh grade uh, planning meeting for uh, Lotus Lake Adventure Day, which will be happening next week, where uh, people from Lotus Lake come and they take the seventh graders outside to take part in activities and uh, that really build cooperation, teamwork, and respect for the environment. Um, we are getting our pre-ACT and pre-SAT scores back. Pre-ACTs were today, I believe, and the pre-SATs are next week. And uh, grades have been going to different uh, to meetings to understand and interpret the data that they're getting. That they're getting. Um, this weekend, Stage 16, the middle school theater program, is going to be performing their, uh, their play, Free to Be You and Me. Um, and also, there will be auditions for the New England Music Festival, uh, which will be happening this weekend. And that's, that was, that's my student report. <laughs> yeah. Thumbs up indeed. Thank you. Any questions for Towns on any of this? Have you, have you seen rehearsals of the play? I have not, but have I, not? Uh, I would like to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Yeah. So just an informed uh, piece of information. If you're looking at the time targets for the start time on Friday, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. It has it starting <laughs> at 6 instead of 7. It starts at 7 oh. to 8. Just, oh. just if you're using that as a very good seat. <laughs> Arriving <laughs> early. At least it's it, early now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you for that clarification, Chris. So, um, and thank you, Towns. Uh, Superintendent Search. Floor, would you, um, Dorothy, I think um, you may be aware, had um, uh, fell, uh, tripped and fell yesterday in front of Hunger Mountain Co op. And um, she's, she's doing fine and, and showing her incredibly strong and tough nature throughout it all. But um, I, she would have come, except that she didn't want to just gross everybody out, as she put it. Um, she's the chair of the superintendent search committee. So in her absence, if I might call on floor, so we, we met on, well, we've been meeting every Monday at 8 in the morning, and I think you all were aware that we added two new members to the, to the group at our last meeting. We added Chrissy, George, and uh, Kate McCann. McKinnon to our, to our group. And for the board, you have uh, Dorothy, Scott, uh, Chris McVay, and myself, and we have Lori and Stephen. And then, as principals, we have Aaron and Alicia that have joined us too, so that you get a full view of the group. And this is just the, doing the, the what we are calling the what we decided at the end is it's going to be the steering committee for the superintendent search. We uh, we thought we were going to talk tonight, uh, right, about what. Uh, of course. Them. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we were going to talk tonight about what the interview committee was going to, right? Mm -hmm. What the interview committee was going to look like and who was going to make the decisions on the, for the interview committee. So, to ba and I should back up a little bit. I was not prepared to do this tonight. Oh, I'm episode, so sorry. But it's okay. Yeah. But I, I, I got it. I'll, so I'll we, had a, we had a, um, a, the ad has been out and it's going to be out, it's going to be on until January 10th. We have created an online survey. For that will go out, will be live this Friday. It, we are doing every every school, every building is having a, a forum in their building for their staff and any community members that want to join. And those dates have been scheduled and also will be out by Friday mm -hmm. uh, with an introductory letter uh, of ex what what we're doing. And then we're going to have a main forum for the community that will be half. Uh, a budget and half superintendent search. So it will be on next Wednesday, the 11th, and we'll start with the superintendent search to set the tone for the budget meeting. And that would be, a, we reach out to the Friends of uh, Education, for Center one that you guys are familiar with. They put out our bus stop and they have been involved with our school for what, 25 years? Really? Or 30? 
So we are trying to create back that partnership, and they will be reaching out to the community to make sure that we get as many people as possible to to this meeting. We had a meeting with them tonight with Mark Andrews and myself, and they're you know they'll start working tomorrow on this. And what's my missing on the, the interview committee? And then on the interview, and then moving along, we uh, we have to decide you know what the membership for this uh, committee this committee would be. So the board has some decisions to make. Uh, I don't know, tonight or uh, mm. <laughs> or mm. but so mainly is the interview committee would be the ones that would be obviously doing the interviews, going through uh, this the school spring with Mark Andrews to decide who would be interviewed. And then the board has to tell us, uh, you know, tell this interview committee how many candidates they are expecting back. And we, we were thinking, you know, no more than two. We were hoping that this interview committee would be no more than 15 people, if possible. Uh, it's still big, but so we, uh, to committee members to, you know, we, we can go through the membership, but ultimately the main decision that I think we made on Monday was that it would be up, because it's the most important job that the board does, it would be up to the board to receive the applications of the people interested for the community and the parents and decide who is on the uh, yeah. on, on the interview committee, and then obviously there there be a presentation from the from the teachers, from the administrators, and um, it, we talked and talked about how many board members, and we. we at that meeting, if we were not all in, in in agreement, but we felt, and Mark Andrews also recommended, we felt that it was important that the the four of us stayed on the interview committee, but that that decision we couldn't make it ourselves. It was up to the entire board to decide. So since you guys had assigned us to that, but then we made it bigger because we wanted to include everybody and have more voices. And then the last thing I would say is that we. You know, we're really, even though this first interaction with the community is more to inform them that we're doing this, the information that we'll be getting from the community will be used to draft our uh, questions for the superintendent. So even though it won't feel as collaborative as they, because, because of the timing, it is still, that's the intention is to inform our questions. And I, I don't think any of what I'm saying, so, you know, it's just information. It's in the minutes, right? Yeah, it's in the minutes. So. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be clear, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Um, that, I think that's that's a pretty thorough um, account of where we are. How does it sound to you? The the, the survey you mentioned. Who is that intended for? If, so the survey, uh, when you start a survey, you will identify yourself if you're a U32 graduate, if you're a parent, if you are a teacher, if you're a staff member, if you're a community member. And so we would have that, that data available. So it's for sure. everybody. Okay. And then also when... The same questions for everybody. The same questions yeah. for everybody. And then for the forum, we have uh, five questions that we'd be asking the community, but it's also in form from... The questions came from the ad that we put out and the survey. So it's all, the idea is that it's all connected. Yeah, uh, having you know just read this chapter, I wonder if that information, if that data that we get back could be you know, sort of double duty. Yes, yes. You know, to inform some other, other things that we have. Yeah, and absolutely. I would have no problem with the four members of the committee also being on the interview committee. I think that that's appropriate. And and I'm running by you any any others from um, among parents, mm -hmm. community members, just so that you feel you have because this is the board, the the, the whole board's responsibility, mm -hmm. and want to make sure that you feel like you're positioned to make a good decision by you know being involved in crucial sort of points along the way. For the survey that's going out and it's going out to everyone in the community and then all of the school buildings yeah. and central office, yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Please. The, so I'm hearing that the makeup of the committee, you would like it to be 15 or less and 
four-ish board members, and then everyone else on the committee will need to write a letter to the board, submit a letter of interest to the board? Right, it'll go to Carla. Carla. Um, and Carla will, uh, will just sort of collate them and, and um, maybe do some screening as well in case they're, you know, just unsuitable uh, uh, candidates. I, I, don't, I don't know what to expect. But there would be, you know, it's, uh, you know, we would make sure that there's representation, you know, so the central office could have, you know, at least, you know, two people. So it wouldn't be like just uh, uh, suddenly all parents or all board members. Right. We didn't have agreement of how many board members, we, you know, people felt like it should be even for, you know, two board members who we were just gonna have two committee members and stuff like that. We just felt that as we we're forming, this is a very important decision. Yeah. So we're not trying to dictate it, but this is the most important decision that we'd be making. It's the most important decision that you want to make. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and as Stephen keeps reminding us, this is a board decision. So we want to be inclusive, but it has to be balanced in such a way that um, we're not so inclusive that we can no longer you know, perform our own, our own function properly. But the committee's recommendations will come to the board. Yes, to and the board makes the final decision. Yes. Yeah. Probably two candidates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to get here, um, I think the um, proposed members <coughs> would be uh, two staff members, um, two administration, two central office, two community members, and um, two student mm -hmm. members. I think I've heard so that's, so it's, you know, there may be an inundation of certain uh, category of applications. It's still, I think we're going to yeah, yeah. out in that, in that way. So that you have a broad base. Thanks. Um, anything else on superintendent search? We're good? All right. Um, negotiations. I, I know Deborah has touched on that already in her, in her report. Um, I'd just like to, to thank you. Um, the, the negotiations um, team. And I, I hope that, you know, how are you feeling about how it's going? We had our first real IBB time, and it, it went well then. I can't remember, and maybe you do, Deborah, if we were thinking we needed more board representation, or? Well, it was a difficult week because it was the holiday week. That's true. Uh, but we were missing three board members. Um, it was a, so we had a small but mighty group, <laughs> and, uh, and the conversation and the discussions were very positive, right. I think, between you. The groups. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I, I think that will be the last session that I will miss. Mm -hmm. It was like the Monday or Monday Tuesday prior or Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving week, week. Yeah. yeah, which is a pretty hard week for some people. Yeah. So, um, but I think it it seems to be a very uh, cordial group, and following with the IBB seems to be a very comfortable way of handling it. Great. I'm happy to hear it. Good. So anecdotally, Manage County has the red hand with the kid in tow. Two of them actually, one's very tall. Um, <laughs> Drives a car. <laughs> <laughs> Not inside the red hand, but inside. Um, and she said she thought the uh, negotiation session went really well and, and the IVB work the best she's ever seen. It's just her anecdotal comment. She, no, no substance, but just flavor of how that went. Yeah, she wouldn't. She wouldn't say that if it weren't if she didn't feel that way. Yeah. And I was in fishing for you. It was spontaneous. <laughs> That's a great. Even better. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Good. All right. Well, now we come to the meat in the sandwich. Um, <laughs> there's something wrong with that. <laughs> Unless you're a vegetarian. Nobody has oh, that okay. dinner yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Where is the meat? <laughs> okay. Um, finance, budget. So, uh, how I, I'll turn it over to Deborah and Lori, and please feel free to structure it as you like. And I guess I'm going to have to get out of the way.
Here are a few school highlights to be expanded and expounded upon greatly as time goes on. <laughs> Let's just to get us started. Um, we have our October 1st count, which is 1,574 students, preschool through graduation, reporting a very positive stable enrollment. Um, we also are very um, positive about, of course, our excellent faculty, staff, and certainly our administrative team as well our dynamic student body, and many and many of the things we've been talking about and reading about are very innovative educational opportunities which are available for students. And of course, we merged to a single district on July 1 of 2019. Before we take a look at the budget um, pieces, I'm going to just talk for a moment, uh, because I wanted to make a, a, a special heartfelt thank you to our administrative team who have been working really hard for more than a month, I would say probably since September, uh, toward the process of helping to make sense of this newly organized district-wide uh, budget, which is a very different not only for all of you, but certainly for administrators, those who were continuing for the prior year, who were uh, more likely to work directly with the school board and the superintendent to develop their school-based budget and at the supervisory union level, of course, to work directly with the SU board to develop the SU budget. So it's a new process here. Um, we are finding our way. We know it will improve even more as time goes on, and we are so looking forward to your feedback as to where we are. We also took the request to heart that Chris had initiated in our last meeting, and which you asked us to bring forward our prioritization. So one of the reasons why the materials are late breaking is because we met just yesterday and we were refining the packets and materials up until this afternoon. So we're going to go through the rules at least on a surface level and then we can discuss them in greater depth in a few minutes. So um, in our last meeting, we shared with you draft one of the budget. And at that time, you can see that um, for the adjusted budget for this year, which is in the first column, was noted the total combined for all of the schools within our new district was uh, 33854769 And moving to the right column uh, under total budget, the larger number there, represents the increase that was incorporated into draft one. Remember that draft one represented our level service budget. And remember that that was not a zero increase, but rather increases were incorporated, such as negotiated agreements and inflationary improvements or changes that we were anticipating. 
So in our first budget, the total expenditure uh, draft was 3.6% over prior year, which represented a $1.2 million increase. And um, when you look at that and, and subtract revenues that we had anticipated at that time, we were looking at a total net impact of town taxes of $937,505, or a 2.77% increase. <coughs> I know we've introduced this to you as just a way of setting the stage for the next uh, level, and I do have this in front of you too um, as well. Uh, but before we make the move to our level, um, our draft 1A budget, um, I did want to point out that in your packet this evening also is a, a letter that was recently distributed by uh, the state in which there was an estimate of our tax um, impact of school funding increases. And one of the things that you'll note on the second page of the second letter in your packet was that school all of the schools in Vermont were polled, and as a result of that, it's anticipated that the average spending increase will be 5%, okay? So across the board, we were looking at our first draft of 2.77, but it's looking more likely that the average increase will be 5%, okay? That's just some, something to share with you in preparation for draft 1A. So, same chart. Um, what differs is the total budget amount on the right hand side and as you can see our, um, we have increases here which I'll be referring to you that incorporate the leadership team's consensus on some additional areas that they would like to see addressed in the budget this coming year. And these were prioritized and you know, thanks to all of uh, our teams often in particular, Lori calculated and recalculated to come up with the estimates that you see here. And the net impact on taxes increased from 2.77 to 4.83%. Okay, and we have documents that provide more detail on this background piece in just a few moments which we'll share. First of all, before we move on to looking at more uh, detailed information about the additions, does anyone have questions about these charts or these documents so far? Would that put us in the, the penalty box? It's too soon for us to tell. We need to have our pupil count, and that's not available until the 15th. Uh, but once it is available, we'll be able to have more information. And what we're hoping that you'll provide us with tonight is, is questions about the additions and or um, comments about, or direction actually, about the percentage that you want us to aim for. Uh, because while the statewide average may be 5%, that may not be the goal that this district has. It may have a lesser goal. Um, we've been looking at about 3% increases annually for some time across the district, uh, all of our, when we were working as an SU. So this is a change, this is an increase only. So I do have a question about yeah. the salary and benefits increase of 6.11. Is that new positions? Is that just with what we have? Is well, the percentage increase is the percentage of the total mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. um, this particular one, I'll back up to the last one, we were looking at 3.91%. So what that tells you is that our suggestions in this draft are in these positions that we're looking at more personnel mm -hmm. as we come to draft 1A. And we can look and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. Thanks. Go back. Here we go. Okay. Um, taking a look at draft 1A, and if, if this may not be the draft we look at, but um, this pie chart is often helpful in giving you a visual of how our budget is broken down. 70% uh, of our budget is salaries and benefits. As you follow that circle, uh, clockwise, you'll see transportation services is 4%. Operations of plant and miscellaneous, uh, 3 Special education, including tuition and contracted services, 9 Non-salary, 9%. And the debt service and capital, 5 Okay. I think that's fairly similar to how most school systems see their, their budget breaking down. Questions about that? Is that helpful, that visual? Mm -hmm. All right, 
So, no, the okay. next, so this is the list that, um, yes. Is, the, is there a pie chart for a uh, draft one? No, but we can certainly prepare that is for you. Do you know if it's comparable in terms of percentage of um, salary and benefits of, of, of the overall budget being around 70%? Fairly similar. The difference is about 750. Um, the sh sheet that you have here, actually, you can look at this, and this is the 761,000. Yeah. Yeah. So you can so see the, okay. the changes right are here. here. So just exactly to your question, I know we don't have a copy of the pie chart, mm -hmm. which is what this included, but okay. the difference okay. between the two is 761,559. So the first few areas, the first three areas actually are related to special needs programs and students, uh, including contracted service changes and then staffing changes. Triple E is a it refers to preschool special education student needs. And uh, so our team worked for, as I said, for several weeks to identify uh, what we anticipated our needs to be. Part of this was outlined in the service plan that was completed in October. And there, but it has, it's one of those areas, the very special education, where there are you know, fairly regular adjustments due to student needs changing, students moving into the system or being identified requiring additional services, et cetera. Uh, so those are, as you can see, that makes up the bulk of the, um, the personnel changes that you see here, those top three areas. The next elementary classroom teacher, this actually rounds out to that half-time callus uh, additional elementary teacher that the board approved uh, about a month ago. I told you this was funny, Chris. <laughs> 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 I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Trying to make the budget like it. It's like, oh, it's getting ahead of me. There we go. Um, my computer stays on, but for some reason, this one has a time <laughs> Anyway, uh, so these are what we consider requirements because our IEPs dictate the needs <coughs> for students with special needs. And that's why they are listed on the top. They were not included in the level service budget because we gave you what we currently had. These are all additional costs in the um, special education and instructional area. The other charge the board asked of us was to uh, consider equity across the schools in relation to other instructionally uh, relevant or student support programs. So we did uh, recognize that there were needs in the area of instructional intervention. And I believe this equates to 2.5 FTE, uh, one of which uh, there's uh, two elementary schools and then another, a half-time person. So with this infusion of additional support, we anticipate that we'll be able to support our students who have um, the need for academic, uh, in particular academic support in the core content areas. And these, again, would be specific to the elementary level, just for these particular increases. And what, at, at which schools? Uh, Berlin, East Montpelier, and Calais. The next is behavior support. Um, this is a separate and apart from the behavior intervention support people who might be encapsulated in the top section. Um, most of our schools have a school-wide individual who serves all students in the area of behavior support. Um, there are a few students who have more counseling support than they have behavior support, and that's fine. But one school in particular, um, we, I think this has been a, a, an ongoing concern, but we felt it rose to the level where we would like to recommend that an individual be employed to provide school-wide behavior support, which is lacking at that school, and it's callous. So that means that the principal has full responsibility for all presently. I'm awesome, but I'm not that awesome. She's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. But, yeah. But for, you know, for every single office referral comes to the principal. Mm -hmm. And that really impedes our ability to move our, support our, our teachers and improve that instruction. So we just be yeah, so would this, this be a full-time person? Mm -hmm. um, and is that year. the conservative estimate in terms of salary and benefits? It must not be is a certified. It's not, we're not talking about a teacher, we're talking about oh, okay. someone with okay. some behavior um, training. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, okay. Kat, is this largely related to your surgeon enrollment? 
some, but um, I've also, you know, had the concern that, and I think Kelly talked about this a couple, was it just last year we talked about it? The changing student demographics. There are so many students who are coming to us with a variety of needs. Sometimes they are identified that they have an impact in an academic area, and, and they move into special education, because there are a lot of kids who struggle, and it disrupts their own learning, or they're learning for others, um, that they are not on a plan, and so we don't have support and resources in place other than they get to the principal's office, which doesn't keep them engaged in learning. Um, it doesn't give them a track back. Finding someone who can really support getting kids recharged and plug back in, I think it's really important. Does our district have a social worker? I think we have, um, oh, I'm, I, that's actually something that we can talk about. I know we do have folks that provide that more at the high school level, but can we ask for those of you who yeah. have, might have, we have a part-time part social worker yeah. here? A licensed social worker? Yes, okay. licensed social worker. Mm -hmm. I don't know part -time. if any of you are, that's the only person. Mm -hmm. And what is that person? Social, social worker. Social worker. Well. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, we're, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, mostly with students. Um, certainly works uh, some of our cessation programs around here in terms of uh, vaping. vaping, yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, controlled substances, that kind of thing. It also makes connections with outside agencies. So oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're, we only uh, three days a week. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, two and a half. Anything else, other questions before we go on? Uh, the next area is one I think that you should be familiar with, acquainted with, and that is the uh, increase in the number of, um, once again, here we go, um, in the number of our high quality instruction coaches, those are people who work with our teachers, and uh, as I'm sure you recall, that this has been a focus for the district for some time, and it had been our plan to increase by one each year for the next 10 or years until we get a you know, sufficient number of people to fulfill that responsibility. Um, we are, we spent some time this past few meetings, particularly this last meeting, talking about how this is an area, you know, a high priority area and also one that we feel we need to uh, do some work this year in preparation for the increase of individuals who will serve in this role, primarily to ensure that we are able to you know, select the right individuals. And when it comes to looking at selecting coaches in the school district, the most effective way is to find a very highly qualified teacher who also has uh, very positive skills in the area of collaboration so that they can instruct adults in a manner that's going to encourage them, as we were, some of us were talking in our earlier it's not an evaluative model, it's really one to support and approach. Um, so this is for one single individual uh, person to serve in this role. Across the district. Correct. Correct. We have 1.2 now. 1.2 now. They aren't across the district, are they? Right, yeah. yeah. They are. Oh, there's mm -hmm. not, the not all of this. One of them works in the middle. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, okay. yeah. 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 So one, one of them provides some time. Um, community Connections is, um, as I'm sure you are aware, a uh, program that we've been fortunate enough to have um, in our schools for, I think it's going on 18 years or so. Mm -hmm. It was initiated through, the Washington, through a partnership <coughs> with the Washington Central Friends of Education, who helped us with grant writing. We had a 21st century learning grant to uh, initiate the program, and it's been a, a wonderful opportunity for both preschool students and their families and our after school before school care. This past year, um, we, uh, there was a restructure at the end of the year in the Montpelier School District um, decided to leave our partnership and develop their own program. Um, so as a result, there has been some adjustment in staffing. Uh, you might remember that as I mentioned in the previous meeting, our previous Mm -hmm. uh, director had, had uh, retired, but we, so we now have a part-time site coordinator, part-time program director, and that's Kim Mulder, who was thinking that what we spoke about that in the past. Uh, but we are still trying to right-size the 
uh, participation and the revenue uh, as well as the subsidy that all is necessary to make the program function in, in the black. Um, our anticipation is that next year that there will likely be some subsidy required. Uh, we're estimating it to be at $60,000. We don't know. We'll know more as months go on. We see how this year, which is our first year as a single district, we're looking at the program, see how our finances unfold. Um, but that it, we feel is a priority. It, it certainly helps to maintain a high level of preschool um, enrollment because it gives the aftercare opportunity. And without that, families who work will not be able to enroll their children in our part time preschool programs. So, yes. How is Community Connections now just the U32 yes. mm -hmm. Just our mm -hmm. um, And their sources of funding, uh, what is their structure? Are they a 501? Mm -hmm. No, they're within their... They are... Oh, um, they're within their district. We had done some research on this because it had been thought that they were a separate entity, but ultimately they have a trade name called Community Connections but they are under Washington Central Tax ID, and they have been all along. Yeah. So they are us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 And their bills go through the warrants that you sign. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, so there's no other source of funding? Oh, they have funding yeah. sources, yes. Um, they receive child care subsidies for families who qualify. Um, so students who participate in their program, they submit claims in the state, actually reimburses. Um, they have um, currently no other grant funding. They charge parents fees. Um, are we looking at the fee structure as well? Um, they do get a, a few thousand dollars um, from towns that earmark that money for students who can't afford to pay to participate in some of their programs. And so that's pretty much a summary. Is that uh, yeah. Um, do, does the structure work? Is My understanding that about 70% of our preschool students are participating in the before care and the after care wraparound. Mm -hmm. um, before we used to have a lot of students that didn't come to our schools um, because they didn't have that before after care <coughs> opportunity. So they have expanded their program to meet our needs. That's great. Um, so it, it would make no sense just to absorb them um, completely and, and have them become just another there's some licensing considerations, and I guess it's a topic for another time. But okay. yeah. just wanted yeah. to let you know that you. we have been researching all aspects of the program. Okay, thanks. Very well received. Really high quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, do a, I do have a question. Would, the, would this additional funding uh, facilitate uh, an after school CC program at Doty? If there are sufficient students. What, what, there need to be, I'm not going to be able to tell you the number, but in order to sustain a program, there needs to be a certain number of people. I'm not sure if there's seven. I'd have to double check. Yeah, I can write that question down. And, and so the question is, um, is there an opportunity for Doty to have an aftercare program and what would need to be? So um, as I'm sure you know, right now, for those students who do need it, we offer the option of busing to run you when there is an aftercare program. And the same is true callous to East mm -hmm. um, It isn't the ideal, and the more students that participate, we can operate more than just need to have it be in the right Okay, I'll write that down. Okay. Um, next is our work-based learning coordinator. If full-time was it stated that way because this is an addition of, I think, a point four to an existing staff member for a student. So this particular position uh, has actually been categorized by the state and there's a specialized certification or license that teachers must have and they're responsible for, for fulfilling the um, our requirements of Act 77 which is the Flexible Pathways Act in part uh, in, in, in particular in relation to making connections with the um, industry and the community and also with colleges uh, supporting our students having experiences outside of the regular school. Um, one area is, extended, is sometimes called extended learning opportunities. So in any case, we have a 0.6 person to go to this topic right now, to this area. 
and there are many more responsibilities that this person um, provides, but it's not sufficient to meet the needs of our students. And we're recommending that this position become full time. And uh, Steve, if you want to add anything further to the responsibilities um, that that person takes on. So um, this person coordinates all of our um, all of our mentors that operate for our pilot, our branching out, our CBL program, our uh, you know all of those programs. And so, um, really, what this amounts to is we have more kids now interested in these programs than this person has time to place them. And so, uh, we had the person at point five. We moved them to point six. Um, just to give three full days and we we have more than enough work um, so just so you understand too this work-based learning coordinator coordinates with the work-based learning coordinators of Harwood uh, Montpelier and uh, Spalding so that the four of them are working within this region to get these kinds of um, opportunities going um, and so there's the sky's the limit on this really in terms of our kids being involved in, in community activities we're only limited by the amount of time this person is working right now mm -hmm. do so, the other schools have comparable like full-time no uh, spalding is the only other one with a full-time person although i they think two full-time now yeah, two full-time now um but the um i would say the caveat to this is if we don't we have the position part-time if we did not have the position at all we'd be required to contract with the tech center um, for them to provide a person who did this mm -hmm. and we actually supported our person in getting this license which you can't get you could not get I think you can now you could not even get it in this state mm -hmm. to get this certification she did it all on her own like through all kinds of craziness mm -hmm. so so, so is it a position you. we're required to have? if we want our students to be involved in community learning opportunities this is yes. a position you have to have mm -hmm. so and that yeah. person has to have that certification. Yeah, that certification is super specific. So that totals our, um, if you can see the numbers on the side, total 761,559. And there were 15 other priorities that we worked from that um, I'll, we'll, I'll show you in our handouts in a moment uh, that did not, we felt, did not uh, have the same level of urgency for this year but things that we may want to address in future years, which will be a discussion that the board would have, and, and you'll see that list in just a moment. You might have noticed, um, I've heard from some board members a question about the uh, elementary foreign language program, and that's on our other list for the future, as well as um, you all received a proposal from one of our teachers, or a few of our teachers who bring orchestra, that's also on our other list. So these, we tried to make this, this list as comprehensive as we could, and hopefully you know, we'll be able to have that more, a further conversation about it. So if you have no further questions about this, uh, you might. I, I actually do. Yeah, Just <laughs> maybe quick, maybe not. Um, so looking at, I mean, this is what, what you guys prioritize, right? And it, you know, I'm roughly adding it up, you know, it looks like 65% you know, of this is for, is to support special education, instructional intervention, behavior support. Um, and the list of things that you didn't prioritize are things like orchestra, right? And for You did and, prioritize them. And, and, right, right, right. But, 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 but below this. Right. Um, and you have to understand that these are, we were tasked with bringing a consensus yes. recommendation, which is what we have. Yes. And it's all of you who decide yes. what will be included. Yes. But of, of course, your guidance and your prioritization is absolutely invaluable mm -hmm. to that. Um, Go for it. Would, would, yeah. would, you, would you make the argument that these, that, that supporting these priorities and supporting the behavior and special education and instructional intervention that 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 making those priorities and providing those resources supports the entire school community that there are benefits across the you know, the whole population of students I would say absolutely 
So I think, so one thing is, um, I'll just take the foreign language, just as an example. Um, is some of the things we looked at and said, okay, what is it, um, you know, we all agreed that we need to have foreign language in the elementary schools, in, in all of them, it's, instead of just one. Uh, but then looking at it and saying, okay, so for next year, just this idea, there, there's work to be done before we can do it. You know, what is it going to look like? How would you structure the position? Um, and so some of the things that got pushed off weren't, they weren't unprioritized for next year because they weren't viewed as a priority, but that they were viewed as more um, multi-year tasks. Like more work to be done. Right? More work to be done on them and developing them. I think a health teacher mm -hmm. was also on there. But certainly, uh, with the increasing number of students that we have who are struggling, um, coming from, uh, you know, having adverse childhood experiences, they're just, they, um, they are disrupting the learning of all students. And when a class, and having just really very recently been a classroom teacher, is as much as you're trying to do to work with all the students in your classrooms, if you have the student who's disrupting and having these struggles and falling apart, it, they, they by necessity take more of your attention. So if you can support those students, particularly in the, in the younger grades, and teach them the skills of self-regulation and all these things, that then you're actually able to increase the level of the instruction that's happening in your classrooms because you're able to focus on the learning, because you're able to, instead of having to spend five minutes calming Chris yeah. down, well, ten because he's Chris, but you know, <laughs> you're, you're able to, to remind him and you have the resources that you can pull in. And then the other thing that comes in with the coaches especially is these are coaches who aren't just working on intervention. Um, these are these are coaches who are often working and teaching about how do you differentiate. So how are you within your classroom meeting the needs of the full spectrum of your learners? So those were those were the thoughts and stuff that were going through our minds. And then in terms of some of the things like I, and I could just pick out the health teacher and the. Um, Spanish, or not Spanish, foreign language, because that's the easiest to label. It's like, ooh, that, we could do that for next year, but we wouldn't do it well for next year. Mm -hmm. So that was some of the thinking, and, and it does, the special education stuff is have to. We can't not yeah. do it. We'll, we'll go to special ed jail. Yeah. But uh, in terms of, I think, sort of, addressing the needs of some of the more struggling students, it actually, while it seems very resource heavy on the struggling students, what it does do is it frees up the skill of the teacher to really enhance the learning of all the students. Okay. Well, just excuse me, we have 15 minutes left for this topic all together. I was, under, I was informed by our time keeper. Thank you. Just wanted to let you know. Go ahead. I just, I, I appreciate that and agree with you, and that's why I wonder if when we talk about behavior support, um, getting something that's not licensed, what is, what's the ultimate long-term cost of putting the cost up now of looking at someone that is more licensed and, and is more trained, but then that um, professional development is already embedded in that staff mm -hmm. that can then transpire more across the district. I'm sure you guys had that conversation, but that's one thing that I'm wondering. This is one position, and what I did, what I mentioned right. earlier is that we have behavioral interventionists, which is another level of support in special education, built into the categories above and into our existing staff. So we actually have um, a plan to. Uh, look more closely at behavior supports. Kelly is bringing a group together to, um, with, a, or with a number of our principals to examine that. Are there ways we could refine or improve how we are providing supports? Uh, how can we improve the quality? How can we support the individuals in those roles? It's uh, only been a few years since we've actually been using our own staff along with hired um, purchase service consultants from other areas mm -hmm. to do that work. 
So we're really just beginning that process. Uh, but I would just want to echo uh, what Bill had stated, which is that if our students would uh, embrace and we are supported, it really does provide mm -hmm. and improve, not only does it provide time, but it also um, results in a refinement, I think, and a, uh, in an improvement of the skills of the regular classroom teacher because they have mm -hmm. skilled individuals working with them and, and that affects all students. And remember, when we talk about equity, well, we have yet to define it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have consensus that it is um, not a matter of bringing everyone up, but bringing them up according to their need. So when we looked at our staffing recommendations, we didn't say, well, everyone must have this number of this staff. It's really, where are we with our achievement and our current staffing? And mm -hmm. we, we thought long and hard about that before making these recommendations. Yeah. Well, and then I remember, Chris, you had talked about um, putting some money towards professional development a few months ago. Um, when we were talking about the capital fund yeah, we've done, we've done allocating to the, it sounds like what is happening here in terms of allocating resources to the schools that may need more help than other schools. And my sense, because you named three schools mm -hmm. um, that would be getting more help um, as a result, and it, it sounds like that has happened here. Um, can, since we've been, my sense is that we've been um, looking at improving um, resources or adding resources to um, address students at a younger age with the theory that um, addressing younger helps when these students grow older. Um, and I think enough time has gone by where we would see the proofs of that. Um, and my question is, are we? Are we, what? are we seeing the fruits of that, that theoretical underpinning of putting a lot more resources into the, or putting more resources into the younger age students to deal with behaviors that will then require less resources um, at an older age because it's more difficult to deal with the older age, or, or it takes more resources to deal with older age students. Um, have we seen that? I mean, and tell me if I'm misstating what I think the, at least the um, um, rationale for in increasing our, our resource in, at younger ages has been, mm -hmm. um, is that it, it pays off in the future because you're not, and pay at a higher cost later. Right. I agree with what you're saying. And I think, yes, in some of the kids, it's paying off. Mm -hmm. But we are also seeing an increase, and we continue to see an increase in the number of kids that are moving into our district, or kids even that have been here long term that have some significantly challenging behavior. They're getting younger yes. in our preschools, they're coming in. Okay. <laughs> and, I mean, this year alone, we had many kids move into our system that we were not anticipating at the start of our school year. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, it's the kids that are moving around a lot, and they tend to have more challenges. Um, and so, you know, some of that is very unpredictable. Right? We don't know until they show up. Um, but some of our schools have a significant increase in that need this particular school year, actually. Berlin and East Montpelier. But at least the experience is proving the theory for the goal, the rationale of what we're doing? Yeah, yeah I don't yes. know that I had like, hard data that I could show you. Um, but I think Thank that you. our behavior intervention supports have been fairly constant over the last three or four years in terms of numbers of staff. Um, I don't know that we could say that we have a value to data, which I think is what you're asking for in terms of. Or, or anecdotal. Mm -hmm. Or anecdotal. Right. Yeah, just but, but I do, if I may, I would strongly recommend that that be a question that our team that is looking at our behavioral support programs and how effective they are, if they would ponder that question and come back to us with you know, further thought. Rather than, mm -hmm. But it's, it is a very important question. We have to ensure that the supports we're providing are having an effect. Well, I think it's something for our community too. Is, and these are the results that we've yeah. been getting over time um, to support. What we're doing. I would. I think one of the data points that, and I don't. I don't have the exact numbers because it's for, um, But one of the things that we do know is that while we've had a pretty significant increase in the number of kids and the the level of services that we've need, that is not matching. That is at a higher rate than what our increase in costs have been. 
And so I think that that's a really good place that it's not obvious necessarily, but when you look back that we put those resources into the younger grades, we've kept our costs down um, at a rate that's much lower than the rate of increase of those needs. And so that's a really good point to, to make within our special ed program because that's, and we, we can see evidence of that when, we, when the kids get to the middle school and the high school level is that, yeah, they've been getting some services for several years it's easier to continue services that were here as opposed to trying to make them up by the time they get to middle school. And early intervention is the best time to yeah. support individuals who might be academically behind or socially. So I, I have a question and a comment. And the interventions, my understanding is they're done right, it's not just for special ed kids. Because really the intervention is, is more, you know, before they become a special ed, you're giving them a shot in their arm and giving them a little extra math before they, so it's not really for special ed. And also if, if the kids that might not need that shot in their arm can be, you know, tied over to the same, making a ukulele. Or like, so, so it is really for us. For a larger range, you're absolutely right. So, so yeah, just so that it's clear, because a lot of people sometimes, in, especially in the, when they're watching it on, on TV, and we had because we have been doing this for a little bit longer, we had a lot of pushback through the years. So I'm just well, thinking, that's exactly why I asked the question the way I did. Yeah, and then, so but to get these guys on the record and saying exactly what you're doing. So. Exactly. So that's sort of where we were going. And then my only question about I understand the. And you've kind of started explaining it. I understand the adding uh, where it says if the high quality instruction coaches. My, my only question is like, where are we? Our chapter today in the book was like perfect for this conversation too. Like, where where are we in each? Uh, are the culture in each building now to the point that the work of the instructional coach or it's. You know, if, if everybody in the same page. It's what I'm, I'm assuming you guys know better than, than me, because as you said, it's not just about adding people, right? Because the, the right if the building is not ready, not the building, if the people, the culture, if the culture is not ready to accept this, then you know we might use the resources for the strengths, right? Like you know, like and, and I totally agree. I've been pushing for Spanish for a long time, but I, that would be the last thing that I would do right now if it was not implemented right. <laughs> right. And we but, have, um, so, so are we there? Am I, I'm here. I'm yeah. seeing some. <laughs> so coaching is part of a larger professional development plan, which we also refer to in the past. And we have been providing very high quality professional development to our staff over a number of years. The coaching is in a recent addition from mm -hmm. the last few years. Mm -hmm. And what that really provides is, based on what we know about research, is that support to assist a person from taking the knowledge that they may have gained from a course or a workshop and translating it into practice. Uh, having a person to support that is the most effective way to improve instruction, improve quality of instruction for uh, all teachers. And the other thing to, it's important to know that this is not an evaluative or supervisory role. It's completely voluntary based upon the interest of the individual to take this guidance and support, which is completely confidential and not shared in detail with supervisors. Um, and, and that's another reason why I think it's so successful, because there's not a worry about, is this conversation we're having going to become part of my record, you know, my evaluation record? And of course, the people who serve in these roles have such a solid amount of expertise. Uh, and they have the opportunity to research and, and provide support in, in many, many areas. It, they're really remarkable people, and we feel that is an important component of our professional development program, not the only one, but an important component. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is for one and six two, but our thinking was one this year and one next year. You don't have that in front of you yet, but we'll see that one. Any other questions? I'm down to five minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, are there any things that we're discontinuing because we're not satisfied that they are doing what they should be doing? We have no uh, reductions based upon poor quality or lack of satisfaction included at this point. But we are, remember, we are looking for your feedback mm -hmm. around the number, the additions, and we'd be happy to continue the conversation or provide, do more research if you would like that about any of these additions for the next meeting. All right. Um, 
So the handout that was passed around has a chart on the back, the very last page. And this is a um, this is where the other 15 items are listed, which we have as a future goal, future consideration. And this is again uh, the consensus of our administrative team. Did you have down for your section? I think I gave it to floor. Did you get them all? Yeah, I sent them all. Oh, they made the same version. No, I didn't. Yeah, I think I have more. Okay. Did, did you get one there? So you'll see the rest of those there. And you'll also notice, I just wanted to bring this to your attention because we did speak a little bit about adding some um, instructional programming to the elementary school. Um, and it was a strong desire on the part of our administrative team uh, and myself to really consider the length of our school day before we made any adjustments to by adding additional programming across the board. Uh, so that is not a problem based upon our current teacher contract. However, our um, support staff contract will need to be negotiated to uh, allow for the potential of an additional half hour per day. Okay? And there's also a cost, as you can see, associated with that for support staff members who work with children who need to stay the additional half hour per day. So for that reason, while I'm confident that we're off to a great start with negotiations, I don't know that we can manage to finalize that part of the negotiations in time to uh, look at it. So that's another reason why we looked at other programming as a year out. Okay? So, to be true to our plan, um, the only thing that's on this chart, I think you already have in your handout, this is a, a list of our capital pro uh, project funds that are to be available following the passage of our budget and with the level one service um, additions included. Uh, and it's broken out right now by school or supervisory need based upon our, um, the way in which we've managed this information in the past. And I would also say that in those beautifully colorful spreadsheets, uh, we have a lot of detailed information that was compiled by John Hemelgarn and Bill Ford, um, neither of whom were able to join us this evening. So um, we thought we might take this on a little time. But there are a few projects which will be coming back to you after the finance can be reviewed in more detail for action. And one is a siding and window project in Doty that had been approved by the uh, Worcester uh, community, the former board for the Doty Memorial School. And uh, there's also some ongoing conversation around an acoustics project in Romney that was approved and where funds were set aside by the board prior to June 30th. So those would be things we'd be looking at advancing. And then finally at U32, um, as you can see there, we've, we've just had a, a very large outlet with our track project, right? But um, with this amount that's remaining or you know, some other discussion about how we might extend these resources, uh, we have some projects within the five-year plan that have been in place for U32, which we can also address at our next meeting, just in the interest of time. Anyone have any questions about that? Sorry that we ran out of time to look at those in more detail. But our, our, as you'll notice in my memo, um, we feel that in addition to the, just like we did with our recommendations for additional staffing, um, we feel that it's the leadership teams that really should assist you in prioritizing projects that we can have to be first in the capital realm as well. So we're continuing to do that work. Okay. Oh, I should have seen one quick because I did. Uh, there's somewhere in there about Doty and Fire Doors, uh, and they are not going to be anywhere near $12,500, uh, which is a number that got thrown in there somewhere, and I don't know which page it's on. But I did okay. just. Thank yeah, you. you did a look, a look at that. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> then we'll, yeah, that's obviously there's more work that has to be done. We feel the estimates might be quite high. Mm -hmm. uh, that we're there, there. You're, you're saying that this estimate is high yes. or low? For the $12,500? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, right. it's way high. Nice. <laughs> Did we hear that? <laughs> Not very much. It's because I don't need to work anymore. So, Deborah. 
can I just offer like this this sheet right here, those estimates? Yes. Um, I would say that these are on the very high side yeah, for a lot of DU thirty two yeah. pieces. Um, so um, so just I, I would just ask you to take these with a big grain of salt. This sheet right here is uh, I can say for U thirty two because we've been looking at some of these numbers. We don't think we're going to get anywhere near this. Thinking, I should get into the paving business. <laughs> you should because we've seen much lower numbers than that. I think that one thing to look in the most important part in this sheet really or how this is pretty long is just to look at the exclamation mark. The, the yes. prioritizing, that is the column that we should be looking at. So if it has four exclamation marks, you know, look at it. The one, you know, it's not really what. That would be I, the easiest way to right, I don't it. speak for everybody on that, but that U32, that's exactly right. Like those, the importance is much more mm -hmm. informational than the dollar amounts that are here. Yeah. So, looking at this, four, if it says something like failure of existing, but mm -hmm. only has one exclamation point. What should that tell us? That is not. It's not a high priority right at this moment. But will have to be. But will have to be taken care of in the next couple of years. Okay. Or it's not a code issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Lori, I did have a chance to offer you a moment to speak about the budget. Did you want to highlight anything else? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, we had color-coded copies for some people, and Stephen ran and made extra copies, and so yours don't have color, so I spent a few minutes putting stars beside the changes. <laughs> so that's in your package. Oh, in the letter. It's, in the, yeah, in the letter. It's, right. Well, no, I'm talking about not the capital, but the budget. Um, so the back page has a list. Oh, yeah. If you flip it back one more, you will see the updated draft 1A. And see how pretty mine is? But yeah. yours is got so served pretty. by the so items good. that we summarized uh, Deborah's uh, presentation by. Uh, so this so, just highlights the areas that we put under that sheet. We showed you at the very end what the leadership team was recommending. We mm -hmm. did that in more detail. So do you want me to take one minute and just say what that is? So where the stars are at the top are our staffing positions that we were recommending adding. Um, you'll see 181,198 for special ed program staffing. You'll see 543,390 for academic program staffing. So it is a staffing increase of 724,000. And then the only other item stirred was a contract service down below for special education programs. And that total was 36971 So those three lines are the expense totals um, that Deborah showed you on the screen a different way. I was just showing it to you in a summary fashion. And then special education programs also have an offset by revenues. So you'll see the final star down at the bottom section under revenues um, that by um, including these special education changes, um, it would also increase revenues by 66,043 uh, for a net increase of 695,516. So that's my highlight. Thank you for giving me a Yeah. Thank you. And if you, do you have any feedback for us about the items that we've recommended or about the percentage? We'd really like to know because it will, this will be an opportunity for us to come back and rediscuss whatever you need. So. Yeah. Lori, historically, is this is you know is 4.82 a high number? Is that low? The average? And we've been hovering around three percent over the last like five years. Has had as a net impact on taxes. In, in 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 your experience, has have has there been a sort of district wide budget? If you added everything up together, or maybe even just for U32, is this historically high? Um, we've had a few schools with that percentage or close to that over the years, but on an aggregate, it's hovered um, around 3% or a little less. We, we have not exceeded 3% at U32 in the, I think, the whole time that we've, I've been here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've been less than that at one point, but, yeah. but we've never exceeded 3%. Goodness. Yeah. And, and also, I think it's important just to remember that there is a one-time impact in our favor of the, um, of the debt being yep. repaid. Um, and and uh, there's a political dimension to this, of course, because 
there's something of an expectation that merger is supposed to be cheaper. Yeah. Um, so we have to uh, <clears throat> have that in mind as we defend this budget. I well, mean, we need to defend the budget whether we're merged or not. I think yeah. that's a dead letter. Yeah. I think we're playing the hand we're, we're, we're dealt merger or, or yeah. no merger. I don't think that has much bearing on it. Um, well, it was just so that, I mean, just so the expectations are understood, what will have to be, um, what pe will be in people's heads. Um, and I think, I think it's been, I mean, it's been explained very well. And it sounds as though, just, you know, based on the questions that you were asking earlier, Jonas, there's an aspect of having to run to stand still, uh, in yeah. a way. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we all know that you know healthcare costs increase, you know, way above inflation. Do we anticipate that you know the you know the, the, the interventions and the special ed costs will that keep increasing, sort of you know, more than three percent in the future? Is you know, is there any demographic or I mean, you know, I think you know as Kelly sort of in, you know intimated, you know, we're largely at the mercy of forces way beyond our control. Is there any sense that this might crest at some point? Based on what I'm hearing across the state, no. Mm -hmm. It's actually a really interesting question, though. Um, in anticipation of, um, of the black grants, mm -hmm. do, are we in a better position if we spend more going in so that we're we get locked in at a higher level than it's a three year average. Right. Three so year at one seventy three we'll have a three year average of our actual spending. Mm -hmm. Going in the future and back. It'll be from it'll be the one I don't know exactly what year that will start, Laura, you might know. But I think within the next couple of years, if they look at the three years prior and it'll be our three-year average of our actual spending. And right now, we're in hold to what, March? Or has that been pushed out even more? Yeah. Act 173, we're, it's 20, it'll be full implementation by 2025. Yeah. Right, facing it. Yeah. And, and you know, and one of the other things we also do is take a look at other um, agencies and services that provide support to students, and I think um, it's my understanding that the governor has asked all agencies to come in with a zero increase in their um, budgets, which includes the uh, Agency of Human Services. Um, I serve on the um, Department of Children and Families Advisory Board, and uh, I know that they are making you know, several cuts, which because we are all in partnership working with students with special needs in particular, um, our most vulnerable children, and we have a responsibility to surround and support every child regardless of how many dollars are available from other agencies or grants or programs. Um, and that is another factor that to play. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a clarifying question on the um, uh, recommendations here? Mm -hmm. um, are the first three bullet points recommendations or requirements based on the and the distinction being recommended to serve students the way we should, or is this required to serve the students the way we must? The latter. The latter. Okay, so it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's it's actually a quasi level of service. Right. It could be right. based on the new information that we have on the new students that we got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think, so, I think it's a good point, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. It would yeah. be it would be good to see, you know. The must, it would be good to see the must haves sort of yeah. separately from. So, to put the triple E line up on that list. Yeah, it's the must. That's the must. Okay, no, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you said yeah. we have, I'm sorry. No, 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 but, but it's combined with best practices, right? It's not just. Mm -hmm. Correct. To have the effect on all children because of all the children. Yeah, it's still one of those that, yeah. When I see recommendation, re recommended, it's as opposed to need. It's just a different. Mm -hmm. Presentation, I think. Um, but in, t in terms of the, um, we have a, a one time no debt payment. Is that just for this year or does that continue? We have another, we, we pay off another one next year, right? Yeah, I put it in the memo um, that we just yeah. handed out at the bottom there. 
U32's first bond is paid off this fiscal year for $462,000. The second U32 bond will be paid off in budget 21-22, and at that time, um, the budget would go down $159,000. Yeah. But those will continue on. They're not like all of a sudden going to spring up. True. So it's not a one, it's not like one. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> yeah, that's the finale. 20 okay. years. Great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So how do you want to do this? Do you want to um, let this sink in and then have this be the trial balloon that we float on the, uh, on the 11th and see what people's reactions yes. are? Yes. And are, you, are you good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Yeah? Does anyone have suggestions for the presentation that you would like us to revise or add more detail? Mm -hmm. case on not I would recommend make a note to that. Um, just Maybe to, even some sort just of plan. Yeah. 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 Um, and also pointing out that the palace point five is already in place mm -hmm. based on student need, that it's not we're adding something for next year. We had to do that. Um, I think that's important as well. Due to increase enrollment. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is there any sense that um, our uh, what we as school district need to address uh, is in part because other uh, social service agencies are not that other budgets have gone down, so ours, so we're taking on a greater share of the social service Definitely. aspect oh, sure. of. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think we should emphasize that as well. Mm -hmm. Some time um, ago, we would receive free services from these agencies yeah. within the last 10 years, and that's, you know, it's practically funded based upon use, like a, based upon the service required. Mm -hmm. And it's statewide. And it's statewide. Mm -hmm. It's not just we want yeah. some beautiful system that's not anyone else doing. Yeah. Right, look at our society. And we're supposed to fix it in school. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Study just came out about the academic achievements are falling worldwide yeah. because of poverty. Yeah. Um, we're just so fortunate to have such a, a wonderful, collaborative, and supportive culture of faculty and staff and that really care for our kids. And um, they, every day they make a huge difference. And, we so appreciate that. Yes. That is a not typical in all schools, and so we're we want to grow and develop that um, because it will of course support our students regardless of their background. And yes, and we've had townspeople who have been willing to fund it as well, which mm -hmm. has been very important to all of it. Um, Flo had a very good suggestion that we just go around to each one of us and just hear um, to make sure that. Everyone has a chance to, to at least say something. So, Vera, um, what uh, about this budget as um, finance committee co-chair? I, I guess I would like to see uh, the top three are necessities, but I would like to see the snapshot of a 3.5% increase. As, a, as an alternative to this? Is that, is that feasible? I'm just writing a list. Okay. That's number one. Eight more to go. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Chris? I'm, I'm happy with presenting this budget as it is. Okay, thanks. Jonas? Um, it's hard for me not to turn all of these meetings into an interview, Lori session. These are the fount of information. I appreciate that. What I I heard the, the word cuts was was mentioned. Um, and I in, in some context I just want to mention that reading the, the, the chronicle over the last week, seeing the article um, about the, the teacher at the table, right? right. Helps you with the white table books you when you're walking by and the distress that seemed to have caused among the student body. One of the things I think that we need to do is maintain the culture and maintain the atmosphere in the school that people want to be here and that it's, um, you know, that students and children feel like they are supported and that they're, you know, um, that just struck me and I just wanted to get that on the table. Thanks. Jen? Um, 
Yeah, I'm fine with this budget as it's presented. I think Gillian's point was really good. We can put that in numbers somehow or in a presentation somehow. Yeah. I'd like to hear the public come out next week to hear concerns. Um, I, I don't have any jumping out at me, mm -hmm. but I'd like to hear what we learn from the community. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm fine with presenting this as it is, and, and I would support also having a kind of alt budget 3.5 just to, again, the, to have the comparison. Marilyn? Um, I echo, I support this budget, and um, I think the community feedback is important. I think if we're going to look at um, looking at a 3.5, how can we maximize on what we have now for um, professional development and um, make sure we capitalize on using that to help growth? George? I support this budget. Um, one of the things that I feel um, was missing or might be um, asked was um, where we are population-wise. Um, trend. Mm. Okay. So, um, you know, are we still on the down downward trend? And what does that look like? And how do we compare it to other schools? And I, I just we didn't really spend too much time on, yeah. popula on student population. Mm. Yes. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that we're going to hear about. Yeah. yeah thanks. Yeah. Um, I see notes are being taken. So, <laughs> Towns, what do you think about it? I'm not going to pretend to understand all of it. <laughs> you can pretend to understand some of it. <laughs> I will do that, though. Um, but uh, I think the presentation was very helpful, and I, uh, I, I agree with this budget, I guess. I support it as a student. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Good. Um, all right. Shall we move on, then? Stephen, you'll meet your goals. Education goals of all the students when they graduate and their students. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to make a note that and Mia need to come to a callback with me. I was saying George will be disappointed if you Great. Okay. So, moving into policy. Um, Chris? I think there's a little bit of sunshine. Thank you for offering though. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, so we um, had a, a budget committee meeting on 25th, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and we have our, our um, uh, unapproved meetings uh, minutes here. Did anybody have any questions about the minutes? Uh, so one of the things that uh, we ended up uh, deciding is that on um, the elementary school choice policy that we've been working on, that we put that off until April. Um, because of all the things that are going on now, we won't be able to dedicate enough time to it. Um, but between now and April, uh, we'll be gathering information about um, other school choice policies and other districts and see how they're working, just gather information before we start setting about crafting a, uh, uh, a school choice policy. Um, time um, and also the uh, realization that the articles maintain our current class and school structures um, at least until June 30th of 2021. Um, also uh, drove part of that decision in terms of putting off policy, school choice policy discussion. Okay. Um, and so we have a couple of policies up for um, consideration. 
And the first up is K2, which is the policy and procedure uh, policy that we um, went through. I think made some minor adjustments, if I'm not um, mistaken. And we're offering it now for first reading. Um, any comments or questions about A2? And, and these are the policies that were already in effect that we're just basically going through again to decide whether we re we adopt them or not. They're all, these are part of the, um, uh, I think the ones to be sunset. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we did incorporate the changes from the committee onto this draft. Right, okay. Hopefully, it's part okay. of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. No good to me, but yeah. uh, are there other comments on it? Did you make any changes of substance? I don't think so. Not in this one. Okay. Um, so, um, in the future, for the ones that are changed, can either just highlight, um, underline it on our copies or highlight it so that we can sure. Yes, yeah, so that changes. Yep. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, next, we have um, uh, A2, uh, which is recommended policy. Uh, and this one does have some changes that um, in, in agenda preparation, uh, what the um, um, committee did was the original language was that the um, items on the proposed agenda is at the discretion of the board chair and the superintendent, um, but we added on the clause, unless the majority of the board members attending the meeting vote to add an agenda item to the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, and that was basically a, um, um, a, a move to give the board as a whole uh, the power to put an agenda item on the, uh, uh, put an item on the agenda, uh, even if the board chair and superintendent were resistant to it. Um, so basically, but it, you put it on to the next, not that these folks ever would be resistant to that, but it's a, basically it gave more authority to the board as a whole to hold the agenda for items that they wanted to see there if it wasn't being brought up or it was being put on by the board chair or the, or the superintendent. Um, uh, the other thing that we, we did in terms of the agenda distribution, we, I think we changed the language so that it was also put on the uh, district website uh, to ensure that it was there as, as a matter of policy as opposed to it's a good idea. And the other change, if you don't mind my mentioning, no? was changing from three days to five to days five. prior uh, in terms of distributing materials to the board. Right. Mm -hmm. the, at least the way we were Regulating that can make practical difference, but it is a difference depending upon where, when our board would be right. uh, scheduled. Because now we get them on Friday, which is five days mm -hmm. prior, but it creates room for us. Any questions on 820? Okay, you're not going to to take out that clause? I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just helpful. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, next up is the uh, Comprehensive Sexual Health Services Policy, C50, which was proposed previously. Um, oh, oh, my goodness, sorry. Okay, so the flag policy, um, we um, discussed, and, and actually it's a pretty lively discussion. Um, I, I thought there was a question about whether we're gonna have a presentation today, and it sounds like not. Um, but based on what the uh, previous board had done, they adopted this policy, the flag policy, um, also um, voted to install the second flag pole, um, and I believe that was Stephen's recommendation. Perhaps I think we've heard about this before, is having a two-pole solution, um, so that you know, there are two poles from which to hang flags. Bipolar solution? <laughs> 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 so I was thinking, well, does Vera, uh, Vera verify oh. the board? But I, oh. but you let me go, Scott. Sorry, you, you, sorry Chris. I, yeah. Um, but so anyway, the the, the, the question that um, uh, we were discussing here is uh, the policy on on flags. Um, this is in terms of decisions to um, have a student group. Basically, the procedure sounds like a student group would like, want to fly a flag. Uh, they come to us, and you know the board itself will decide based on these various criteria. Uh, we 
um, discussed that the policy has not been really implemented because it's supposed to be, the permission is supposed to be renewed annually, um, and that hasn't happened, and uh, so we want to talk about uh, mechanisms for how that should happen. Should it be up to the student group? Is there a self-regulating where we, we would, as a group, um, just get a, um, a notice that the one year is up, um, and then you'll alert the student group to read the petition, uh, or what have you. But it's just, it's kind of like unenforced and not nothing. Another thing that came up and, and it was that um, having the uh, Black Lives flag on the main pole with the U.S. flag and the Vermont flag, um, there was comment that community member thought that that was a violation of flag etiquette. Um, I, I went online and looked at flag etiquette and came up under the old uh, Farmer's Almanac um, and went through a whole series of um, rules and, and decided it, it didn't seem to me that it was a violation of the etiquette rule. Because um, I think the um, etiquette rule they would have been talking about was uh, the U.S. flag, um, if other flags are, have to be below it. And it didn't say only state flags, but it just said other flags. So I didn't, I personally did not see it as a violation. I don't know if anyone has a different um, opinion on that, but that, that was one of the things that were, was raised. But, Stephen? So in addition to the Farmer's Almanac, yeah. there's other signs as well. <laughs> so, uh, the Farmer's Almanac signs some statues. But, but it, and it actually, the Farmer's Almanac does a good job of summarizing the uniform flag code of the United States. And so um, this is not a law, but a code in our country. Um, the, um, there are several requirements um, that it puts forth. Um, there is the only thing that it says is that you cannot put an advertisement uh, flag um, with the U.S. flag. Mm -hmm. right? So that should not be. But there are no other stipulations other than that the, um, the American flag should fly at the highest point or equal point, equal and point. Right. depending on how flagpoles, there's all kinds of rules about how flagpoles are arranged. Right. Um, so we won't go into all of that. Um, but also the Vermont, um, each state has their own uh, flag law as well, and Vermont has one as well. Um, Vermont um, is really, um, it does not designate that the state flag has to fly um, above any other flags other than the American flag. It only states that it, inform, it carries forth the things from the flag code itself. Um, but it does have an interesting caveat in the Vermont one that if any flag is defaced um, or uh, mutilated or, or there's several things, they've got a whole list of things, that Vermont allows for you to be imprisoned up to one year and fined up to $1,000, which is not something we have done, but, um, but there actually is a law in Vermont about how to treat the flag, as opposed to a code, which is what the U.S. code says. So I think it's, it's just important to note um, that there are some differences between those two. Um, we have not moved any flags. We have one bare flagpole, as, as the above the fold um, article uh, indicated. Um, I've been speaking with the student uh, group, the Black Lives, uh, the BLAM uh, student group, um, and we had a very good conversation this week about like what do they want? What what are, what are they? What their original intent? Um, you know, when we we started to fly the Black Lives Matter flag, what was the original intent, and how can we continue that given that we have two flagpoles? So they're putting together a statement about what they would like. Um, so I don't want to speak for them in this case because I don't want to misinterpret anything that they say. Um, but we will not move any flags until we have a statement from them and that they can, they can bring forth here as well. And so um, I think that they're going to come up with a pretty interesting proposal based on the conversations, but I don't want to speak for them until they have that statement. We're, here's the thing. We're not in any rush. We have two flagpoles. We have a lot of spots to put flags, and we've only got three flags to fly. So we're okay, right now. Good. Thanks. So um, I would propose that we, if there's any questions about the, the flag flying policy as it is, uh, we should raise them. I do think we should incorporate procedure into it so it's clear um, about having it renewed and things like that. Um, or not. Or if the group as a whole says, you know, we don't need to renew it, we just need to wait for another student group to make a proposal, and what's important um, to note here is that it is always student-based groups 
yes. um, that have the right to petition to fly a flag. Um, what, I, what I would propose that too is that if, we, if there's a group that makes a proposal and the administration ends up saying no, that they have a, um, a right to petition to have us hear it um, and make a decision on whether we agree with the administration or not because ultimately it's the board decision on whether a student group should have the flag flown or not. Uh, and that's no disrespect to you, to you folks. No, but I appreciate just, that. Yeah, so it's just, and, you know, so write a procedure for that type of review um, if, if we're, as a group, interested in that. Okay, sounds good. Um, I notice it's 9 o'clock. So as, um, as promised, uh, threatened, whatever, um, what I would like to do if if the um, if, if it's possible to excuse the leadership team, those who sure. wish to be, um, all members of the leadership team who wish to be excused and to carry on with your lives are, are welcome to um, to go home. Can, can but I ask you a yeah. Um, did. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I would like to get the sense of the leadership team on the um, hate symbols resolution. Very good. Um, yeah. Just to their, in, you know, get their view on it, whether it should be modified or because it does um, cause them, we're directing them to, uh, and maybe it's a, something they already do, but it, it does involve a direction to the leadership team. Sounds good. So after the hit symbols discussion, shall we Absolutely. let them go? Absolutely. I just okay. Um, because it involves us. Okay. Very good. Scott, um, would you also like to take a photo of extending for? I would now? love to. I thought you would. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to extend from nine to nine thirty. I'll second Thomas's motion. I will move that. <laughs> okay. Thomas <laughs> moves. Chris seconds. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Okay. Unanimous. Um, thank you, Chris. Sure. So, do you folks have a copy of the resolution? Um, okay. Um, any comments from the board? Um, any, any comments from the board or the administration team on it? I have a question to the people who will know the uh, uh, prevention of harassment, hazing, and bullying policy more than, better than I do. Which is, in order for this to go into effect, does there need to be a victim? Does there need to be a clear victim in order for this to go into effect? I was just asking Kat. So, so this, is one of the con this is one of the things that we've discussed. Mm -hmm. So for there to be a true harassment complaint, there really does need to be a victim to that. But it does not mean that we can't address issues that are potentially harassing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's the that's the line. I think that we would have to go with with administration. We could not have a finding of harassment, like we could not say that a student was harassing someone else if there was no someone else, mm -hmm. because that is the definition of harassment is that there is a victim of that. Um, but that does not mean that we wouldn't be able to remove something. Would that fall under the policy? Those actions taken. That would fall under the school's discipline policy. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And do, do, is there like a clear guidelines for responding to incidents like this? To well, there's clear guidelines for responding to any disciplinary incident. Okay. Right. So I mean, yeah, we've got that well established. Okay. Does the um, uh, bullying, hazing, harassment policy need to be tweaked um, or added to? You know, just you can. to make it broader. Than no, it already is. No, you don't, to, you don't want to implement this. Okay. And, and so I, I would also say, too, and this was a, a realization of, for myself, is that a lot of these questions, because they're coming from U32, um, we've been answering a lot of these questions, but really in deference to my esteemed colleagues <laughs> up here as well, like these policies and these procedures will affect all schools. And okay. I think that just be I know that, that U32 has spoken a lot about flag policy and, and hate symbols and all of that, but but you know, just to be clear that these are things that the entire um, administrative team will have to address within their own schools. And so just, just so we don't forget that, because this is these policies are kind of growing out of issues here at U32, but they do affect everyone. Right. So um, I did a 
as, as much Google searching as I could about other districts that have faced similar questions, and I found um, in Albemarle Albert County, Virginia, which mm -hmm. the county seat of which is Charlottesville, Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. um, the superintendent um, got impatient uh, with the pace of deliberations in the board uh, and wanted uh, the authority to remove Confederate and white nationalist imagery from his schools when he felt it necessary. So he um, formalized an interpretation of an existing policy um, that required no action for the board um, and interpreted uh, it as symbols, lettering, or insignias associated with organizations that promote racial hatred or violence or that support white supremacy to include Confederate symbolism and other racist imagery such as the swastika are not permitted in our schools because they cause substantial disruption interfere with our educational responsibilities and may lead to further unrest in the future. I would point to our existing policy on student self-expression, policy C27, um, that says uh, this policy prohibits self-expression, that, etc., or E, interferes with or advocates interference with the orderly operation of schools. Um, I interferes with or advocates uh, interference with the orderly operation of the schools. Based on what we've heard from people um, who are in the schools um, and have told us about racist and white nationalist imagery and messaging, often coded and um, obscure, um, um, uh, that uh, I wonder if it would be appropriate either to amend policy C27 or um, express somehow that the sense of the board and express to the superintendent um, that it is the sense of the WCU USD Board of Directors that symbols, lettering, or insignia associated with organizations that promote racial hatred or violence or that support white supremacy to include Confederate symbolism and other racist imagery such as the swastika interfere with the orderly operation of our schools, <coughs> which, would, which would have the effect of prohibiting display of Confederate and white nationalist imagery in the schools as we have determined that that interferes with the orderly operation of education. It's very interesting. Um, should we send it? Can you send it to me? Well, yes. send it to Deborah. But, but also send it um, to the policy committee for yeah, further for further <coughs> working of this uh, of this resolution. Well, actually, no, it would take, um, it could be worked the resolution, but also uh, address uh, the policy. To another policy. Right, right, exactly. Thank you. So the policy committee, just for my well, If you send it to me, I'll yeah. get it right out to them. Um, and, 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 and Aaron well, and, and Jody. Oh, yeah, that's right. Aaron um, and, and Jody. Jody. Mm -hmm. What, what policy number was that? C27. C27. Mm -hmm. So I have a clarifying question, though. And this is, and, I, and I'm not pulling up the policy right in front of me. So let's say, for example, um, a student comes in wearing a hate symbol. If I were to witness a student using racially derogatory language to another student, um, to to student, you know, student water bottle, student water bottle would not have to file a complaint under HHB. Mm -hmm. Because I, as a reasonable person, I, as a, I think that there's something about the reasonable person I could reasonably assume that student water bottle would feel, uh, I, and I can't, I'm not pulling up the language right now because it's, it's too late. So what, um, what I'm wondering and thinking about is so that then if, if student cell phone comes in wearing, wearing an anti-student water bottle, um, logo, then couldn't I, isn't that the same as seeing student cell phone using the racially derogatory language towards student cell phone and student water bottle wouldn't have to make a complaint, but that I would be beholden to in initiate an HHB investigation under the reasonable language? You would have to initiate an investigation, but at the end of the day, no matter what we end up calling it, no matter what conclusion that we come to. You well, when a sixth grader does something like that, it's, it's much, it was a, um, 
I don't know, some god-awful monster truck thing. Um, and, sorry, there's a monster truck thing. Yeah, my two-year-old is not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your two-year-old likes the really cool ones. Um, so there is, that, there is that teachable moment, but in terms of initiating the looking at it, student water bottle doesn't have to complain. If I observe the behavior, I, as the, admit, as the building admit, administrator, am legally obligated to initiate the HHB process, whether it results in investigation, whether it results in just being misconduct, an education thing, or anything like that. So it's not that student water bottle has to, to go to administrate a coffee cup and say, I am a visual <laughs> behavior. So I don't know if that helps you feel yes, any yes. better, Count. It's it's so it it's it, because the, the purpose of the hazing and harassment and bullying laws, towns are really to in, in, these interactions in between students are oftentimes really predicated on a power differential. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they, they put the onus on the administration to be the person to be the people who write that power differential um, for them, and then and then the what do you do about it is the important question because sometimes, quite frankly, people make do these things out of just not knowing, like my sixth grader with his Confederate flag, um, and so that's when you know it's a it's a process that moves forward. But the policy really does put an enormous amount of pressure on the administrators and because of that power differential, particularly with bullying. So does that? Yes. OK. okay. Is, is, is it pressure or responsibility? It's Just responsibility. It's not, like it's no, not pressure in a bad way. But yeah, it's, okay. yeah. it's I, I think, personally, I get all emotional about it. But I think it's really our primary responsibility as as school leaders is to protect the emotional and physical safety of all of our students. Mm -hmm. That's our primary job. Education is second, really is. And I think that part of this resolution, the second part, paragraph, which talks about um, that the board directs administrative officials to vigorously and promptly enforce these policies, I think is a statement that is very, very important and aligns closely to your point of view and of course our obligations as well. So. Okay, so when we, we will revisit this in the future for the meeting. I'm wondering also if quick symbols is defined in this as to what like this resolution sees I hate symbols. I don't think there is a definition. There is so many. Yeah. There's a lot of discussion about that mm -hmm. and a list that yeah in our when we talked about the policy and um, a list that we can re could have referred to, and I forget how many were in it. Southern Poverty Law Center's list. Yeah, hundred, hundreds. Well, it was yeah. over hundreds. Right? Hun yeah, I mean, sorry. hundreds of them. Sure. So to try to identify them, mm -hmm. and and then calling attention to all of the different ones that we didn't even know it, it, it we didn't know how it would be feasible to ever list them out. Um, I would point to something like the policy that Jonas wrote off that clearly defined. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Some, yeah. Something like that. Just mm -hmm. something that like directly addresses at least the main ones. Yeah, that's great that you found that. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So, Chris, do you want us to vote on first readings and second readings? We, we, actually have we need to do that. We have one more. Okay. Um, but do we want to let our administrator vote? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. So the okay. so the next policy is the um, <coughs> comprehensive sexual health services. Yeah. Which, which was melted down from a multi-page um, and endeavor into the food presentation. And, and, and separating mm -hmm. policy from the procedure. Mm -hmm. um, and curriculum, and, which also includes curriculum. Right. So it's a, it's, now it's a single page. Substance is the same um, in it. Uh, I don't think there's any other um, in substantive changes to uh, the policy uh, that we discussed previously, other than separating it out um, to 
have procedures set up from the policy and, and the rationale. The rationale for the policy is also contained in the, in the procedures and act. Um, are there any questions? Does it include anything about lubricants? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that was part of the original policy. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. the wording. Uh, Can you talk about barrier methods? Yeah. Was yes. to be inclusive of all methods? Okay. Yeah, and that was the intent. Yeah, do you feel like that's not. I'm just uh, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it would be clear to me. Okay. Have you vetted this with the, the teacher who introduced it to us in the first place? Because I think that maybe mm -hmm. sure yes. her her, her in, yes. Jody has. no no one. Yes, Jody did. Jody. Yes, Jody did. Jody. yes. Jody did. and she oh. suggested some of the. For instance, it was STD in the last version that we looked at. Oh, right. okay. um, last week, and we changed it to SDI based on her um, request, and also. Um, there was a include a delay in first sexual experience. She requested that it said something else originally um, in the first draft that we we looked at last week. So her um, recommendations were in there. So one of the things that we we discussed the committee was uh, the funding aspect um, because if uh, you look at section C, um, if there's no um, funding from uh, community partners, uh, then barrier methods uh, are not available. Um, is that something that we, as a board, uh, will support funding? Um, if so, we, have to, we need to modify this policy. I'm pretty sure Planned Parenthood is covering everything. It, it, it may be, but if they end up not for whatever and reason. They don't get funding. Then, then do we? Then there's no there's no funding because the policy clearly ties the provision of the uh, barrier uh, methods to funding from community partners. It doesn't prevent us from making that decision, right? Yeah. Oh, is that, no. that would be in the future? Yeah, in the future. No, right. it's not prevent us from doing that. I think we're okay. Yeah, yeah. The way it's worded now, now, I think then the high school would come to us and say, we've lost support from our community okay. partners. What do we do? Okay. Um, the other thing that um, we discussed is whether we should um, had this policy sent out to all new students that come to U32 um, because it has a parental request section. Um, and it's a good perspective that it's just providing notification to an interest group being the parents if they wanted to exercise that right. That's a good idea. Um, and and, and our, our handbooks, student family handbooks, incorporate a number of policies. So I think that would be the best way to ensure mm -hmm. it was available to all families. Uh, rather, in other words, the handbooks themselves are 50, 60 pages. I don't know the total number. But in any case, it includes many policies. And I would think this would be a good one to include in the handbook, which would be distributed to all families. Okay, but the policy itself are printed that so folks Correct. Yeah. know where to go. The other thing that, um, and what I would like to do for all our policies is um, at the very end have a section that says procedures to this policy can be found at, and then give the site where they're located because it's not always obvious uh, since we yeah. have the procedures separate from the policies where to look for them. Yeah. So people just, so I, I would like to have that as a, a uniform, mm -hmm. just a standard clause. I would right underscore in. that, yeah. Yeah. Then are most of them found in the manual? The handbook. Handbook. Maybe, but in the you handbook. don't know there's... No, I, I just meant it wouldn't have a different wording on every policy. It would almost always be... Oh, yeah, be, I'm sure it would be. Yeah. But there just may be other a different places. page number, potentially, mm -hmm. right. for right. Different the different link. schools. Different yeah. mm -hmm. And then it'd have to be updated each year if the policy man... I don't know that you'd so, want the page number. Yeah, I, don't page. Know that I think that's too specific. Not necessarily for a conversation here, but uh, administrative procedures probably should be kept as a separate binder that can be accessed, you know, a separate list that can be accessed. That way the common, we don't go to different pages in different handbooks, but we, we can start working. That's just, that's just a structural issue. That's, we talked about how that's a work in progress this year. It's a goal of ours, and yeah. particularly with the merger, uh, because we have, we understand that some of our procedures are best kept individual based upon the school, but there are others that we should systematize. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, any further questions? Is there a motion to adopt, uh, or, sorry. Is there a motion for first reading of policy A2 and A20? And, well, do we want to adjust by raising or do we want to modify it? 
Or are we going to... We'll bring that... Third. Wait. Right. It's first yeah. reading, so it's just the first reading. Okay, we can do first reading. But yeah, you don't have that as modified, right? Mm -hmm. Just first reading. Hmm? You can, you can modify, modify it after the first reading. Yeah. If we want to, yeah. If it's yeah, I thought we were going to defer action on that until we heard from the plan. You, you don't need that for the no, 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 that, that yeah. policy. Yeah. Yeah. So that we're not, you know, that one thing that I want to make clear is that we're not the ones that are going to be deciding which black folks yes. you are at this, the administrators yeah. and the students, because it's student driven, right? Right. So, so you know, we have, there, there, check, yeah. the, the board ultimately decides the, uh, whether to decide the plan. Yeah. So whether to decide the plan, you know, yeah. which hall? No. The school. The school and the kids and the We'll inform you. Yeah, inform us. Tell us where, how you would, where you'd like that responsibility to lie. <laughs> I, and I think you stay with your policy. Yes. This policy is fine. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of the nitty gritty. Yeah, this is the first reading, too, isn't it? It you is first. Yes. Yes. So there's three first readings. So move, um, is there a motion to? Yeah, I'll move it. Okay, so that's first reading of A2, A20, and F46. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and is there a motion for second reading? <laughs> I think Chris, your, your chairman instincts have, have been <laughs> okay. at, at <laughs> 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 Down here with the rest of us one point. Yeah. 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 So it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, I should just let you go. Um, okay, like Chris was go saying, <laughs> um, anybody move C50, Comprehensive Sexual Health Services Policy? Is that also first or second reading? That's second, second, second reading. I, I'll move the, the second reading. Yes. I'll second. So, Lindy moves, Jonas seconds. Any further discussion? No? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Great. Okay. And we have... Um, the hate symbol resolution <coughs> and Jonas's text and possible modification to C27 going back to the um, to the policy committee. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you policy committee. That's great stuff. You're yeah, yeah. Thank you for agreeing. Okay. Um, 8.0 personnel. No. And we're under one minute. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, and we're also five minutes until 9.30. Um, uh, leadership team, please, with our uh, thanks. My mind is right here. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll try to accelerate this. That's okay. Um, I would propose a possible renaming of the district for another occasion. Um, <laughs> thank you. But there, there is... Um, what am I, what were the names of the board of directors? What about the um, terms and oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. the information about the uh, current and future board members? Thank you, everyone. Uh, Good night. So, <laughs> this is about um, recruitment. And retention. And retention. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. We have now. Now, if you get extras, oh, he did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, 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 I'm writing it for you. Okay, now, and, and Towns, it, you don't have to stay for this if you don't want to. But if you could persuade your, you know, someone in your family to look Back at this. Back to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe we were talking. <laughs> Maybe. Um, any questions about this? No. It's pretty self-explanatory. But we need to... Um, we need to keep this uh, in, on our radar since we will be um, not only needing to find five new members, one from each town, to be elected in, at town meeting on town meeting day, we also have four members whose terms are up uh, and who need to be re-elected, I hope, on 
um, on Tom Day. So, that's everybody knows who that is. Yeah. That's not on our website, it's on. I don't have that list with me, but it is on our website. You're, along with your name, is your term when your term expires. In case you're unsure. Of that. Uh, I would also just like to add, if I may, that uh, January 27th is the deadline for an individual who wishes to run again for a new people to bring forward their petitions. What was that deadline? 27th of January. Yeah. So, uh, and it is the 27th. Yeah. Okay. 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 But I, I thought it was the 15th. Oh, the 27th seems like you want. Yeah, and I thought it was, I got that from a town clerk, but you know what? Well, I'll verify yep. it and send it in. <laughs> oh, sorry, Chris. You have a clerk. There's an earlier deadline for funding requests, oh, but for people, no. she's right. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. because the town meeting is later. <laughs> oh, that's what it's later. It's yeah. Yeah. so many days before. And can we incorporate that into a few different uh, front porch forum? I, Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to because yeah. it's not like people are breaking down the doors to serve on boards and to need nine people total. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Almost like a, I, I mean, I don't know if the four people right? who are up are rerunning. Yeah. Or oh, like a, we can just do it over and over. We can do it. Yeah. We can do it an hour from our office yeah. as opposed to all of the sites. Mm -hmm. So we'll do it at our office. Yeah. 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 And, and one of my hopes is that maybe if People may not ever break down the doors, but maybe they'll not be voting for the doors if we're able to not have the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kat was saying she's had some um, recruitment, but one person said that they were going to vote on the doors. Yeah. So we'll always look at that. There's two minutes left. Yeah. Um, so uh, the question is uh, would you like to have an executive session? in order to um, uh, check in with Deborah on her goals? Or would you prefer to have this happen on another occasion? Perhaps, um, perhaps Fleur Jones and I can, um, can set something up when we get together with Deborah on Wednesday, set up a, a little, you know, so that we're not just kind of stumbling into it. That's, that's, that's yeah. Is that okay with us? I'd like to not set the precedent of extending twice. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Okay. In, in that case. Don't forget uh, to turn in your cards if you've written them. Yes. And I will distribute that for you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. and one, one thing about renaming the district. Yeah. Anybody have anything? Oh, yeah. Any thoughts? I have yeah. a total thought. Yeah. What's your thought? My thought minimalist, based on what we've got. Pride, recognition, U squared, 32. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, it's at the point where we there. reach out to the community <laughs> and <laughs> at a way that's not our district anymore. We make it, we yeah. make it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Are we you yeah. Yeah. It's funny though, that number no longer applies to our high yeah. yeah. school. So now it would be snowflake district. And then it would be Rushing Brook district during the springtime. And then Doldrums during the summer. And then autumn leaves during the fall. <laughs> we need to come up with some system to collect feedback from students. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll yeah. We'll. We'll. Um. And and so that it's not you know voting at vote face or something. Like that. <laughs> um, they should have accepted that. <laughs> that was not that fair. I, and I agree. And it's an opportunity to design a new flag. If if I may, just <laughs> capital <laughs> region school district. What? Capital, capital region. region. <laughs> it, in lowercase. <laughs> OL or AL. <laughs> okay, everybody. AL. Um, oh, yeah, this is on this, on this 9.30, adjourned by consensus? Yes. 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 Thank you.